Hey, it's Drew, and uh, today I'm going to go over the next advancement in uh, my project that I've been working on. So, um, people who have been watching my YouTube channel and uh, uh, certain Discord server I'm on for a while know what I'm working on. People who don't, uh, I'm probably going to post this to a programming subreddit. I'll explain it really quick. So, um, uh, drones use a digital, F well, sorry, use an analog FPV system for pilots to see. Uh, what the drone, what, from the drone's point of view in drone racing, so. Uh, and let me try to get an example of how bad it looks. Um, really quick, yeah, okay, so. This isn't too bad, but when you are actually racing, um, I've seen a lot of videos of it, and it, it just really looks terrible. So firstly, NTSC is a really bad standard, and the color is lost extremely easily. Um, that's actually not too bad, but um, I'll have to link something in the description about what it looks like when it's terrible. Um, essentially, there's just like static and everything everywhere, and it's terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, my goal is to design a system that will send, well, close to digital signals, um, not, not technically digital, I guess. Oh no, words. Um, it'll use a digital system to send video um, across, and the goal is not only to send video um, that is not susceptible to interference as much as analog. Um, I want it to be of higher quality as well. So, uh, in order to do that, I've gone through a lot of different design processes, and um, very recently I found out that a lot of the things I was going to do wouldn't work because apparently MultiGP only allows certain transmitters, so I can't build my own transmitter, which means I have to keep the bandwidth of the transmission uh, within around 6 megahertz, which requires me to implement JPEG compression. So uh, that's going to be fun, and that is what the topic of this video is about. The first step in uh, JPEG compression is something called a discrete cosine transform. And um, what I'm going to show you right now is that I have implemented a one-dimensional discrete cosine transform on this uh, Intel Max 10 FPGA uh, thing, a thing I've got. Let me just point this at it. Oh, God. This tripod I made is so terrible, but it works. Um, yeah, so this is a um, Accelerate Snow. Um, it's supposed to come with like a, a retarded sort of system with uh, like a, emulating an Arduino Uno at 64 megahertz and some other stupid stuff that I really didn't want to deal with, so I just decided to scrap that and start from the ground up. Um, there's four LEDs showing the lower four bits of stuff being sent to it from when I was starting off. Um, this has a stupid pinout, so I had to make my own board that um, breaks out a normal JTAG thing to it. Um, this is a USB blaster to program it. Um, we've got an Arduino. It uh, serves two purposes. Firstly, um, it's providing power to it, because for some reason this doesn't. Um, and also it's going to be used to um, use a UART port on the... Well, it's basically being a UART port. Um, I can send commands from my laptop to it, uh, which is the whole purpose of it. We're already three minutes in. Fantastic. So now let's start to look at what I'm doing. So what have I done to implement this? Well, I don't know much about how the floating point standard works and therefore I decided I am not going to try to implement it because I don't know how and the libraries and stuff I found online have copyrights and are really terrible and hard to can understand because I don't understand how it works in the first place so how can we get around using floating point numbers for something that is so well dependent on them hmm well I've essentially figured out a very easy way to do it. So if you were to, let's say, multiply the number 10 times this. So, oops, that's not a zero. It's hard to do this behind a tripod. So we get 3.53 whatever, right? Um, but what if we were to instead do this? So if we do, start by doing 10 times 1024. So that'd just be bit shifting it 10 times. So we get this. So now if we then multiply that really weird thing times 1024, we will get 362. So now if we take this number, multiply it times 362, then bit shift it um, downwards 10 times by dividing by 1024, 
then there's no decimal points anywhere in that. And as you can see, this doesn't have a decimal in it. Um, and then we can continue to do that process where we multiply it by something like in this process. And we can retain three decimal points of precision, almost, kind of. Um, but then when we want to convert it back to a normal number, we just have to divide by 1024, which is another bit shift. And that will give us, well, so this is uh, 3.535. Uh, this is 3.5351. So it's very close. As I, well, as I said, three decimal points of precision. We got them. So that works. And that is how I'm doing this. So um, over here, uh, this is Quartus Prime, my new least favorite program I've ever worked with. Um, so I have some open source serial stuff, which was very fun because it took forever to get working because I did something wrong because I'm stupid. Um, this is a thing that just um, essentially will take commands from the console and turn them into actual actions. And then this is something that will relay those actions to the discrete cosine transform. Um, this is the fun part here. Anyway, um, so I've implemented that so when we take the data in, it's single bytes because um, I'm planning on using on OV7, uh, OV7725, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, camera module, which obviously doesn't have the highest color depth. The green channel is only six bits, so eight bits is already in too much, well, already more than we need. So we're just sending a single byte in, uh, bit shifting it 10 times, and then doing whatever calculations we need to do to it. And then we are sending it back um, to the console, uh, so it can be sent back to my Arduino or whatever, right? Um, but this gets rid of a lot of the precision um, in this exact step here uh, by bit shifting it 20 times, but I can re retain the precision I need to um, carry out the JPEG compression algorithm. So uh, that's a thing. So let's now show it working. Uh, one thing, well, one last thing before I show it working. So if we look at this, um, what I've done is that I have copied and pasted the entire uh, algorithm here into uh, the Arduino code, and I have it just run at startup. Uh, I had to change this back because I did a, this is my second take. Uh, pretend these are all 33. And that I never had to change them. Okay, um, so this is the input. And then, uh, let's see, it's input thing. And then at the start and setup, it'll run this with the input thing as the variable. And then at the end of this, I just have it printing out some stuff. Uh, we don't need that anymore, actually. So, yeah, we're just printing out the result. And this is done with floating point numbers, uh, so that way I can compare it to the floating point number, what my FPGA does, and see if it's working properly or not, um, and that was really helpful. So now, oh god, did I screw this up? Okay, I had to play. What did I do? Why won't you upload? Come on. Please? There we go, now it's doing it. Okay. So now if we open up the serial port, you can see that it'll tell us what the answer should be. All right? In this case, it's um, 93.34. Um, so let's now send the value 33 um, eight times well, to fill up the eight registers. As you can see, this is what we're supposed to do or whatever. Um, so what is 33? So in order to send it over the serial console, I didn't want to have to implement parsing ints or whatever, so I decided to just use ASCII. Um, so in this case, 33 is an exclamation point. So what we'll do is um, use the write command, which is just the letter W, lowercase, and then um, the exclamation point, and that will then set the first register to that. Fun. Actually, um, I have to send a couple things first. Oh, did I screw something up? I might have. Oh, well. Um, oh, right. I know I did. I unplugged the power for a little bit, and I have to reprogram it. Dur Nope, I have to push it down, otherwise it doesn't work. There we go. All right. All right, so... Um, there we go. So now if I press A, it'll just relay A back. All right, so, yeah, again, we're going to write to the first one, and to the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Uh, and then one more for good measure, because why not? Um, so now we've set the eight registers um, inside of the... FPGA to the value 33, 
And um, it's actually already calculated the result. It calculates it in real time, which means that uh, depending on what clock speed I set it to, for example, if I wanted to set the clock speed to something like 200 megahertz, it would calculate it 200 million times a second, uh, which is fun. So now that we've sent it there, um, we can read it back after I reset it. Because uh, it basically just implemented a counter to say which one it's going to. So uh, it'll like set this one, then this one, then this one. But it'll keep going forward and overflow repeatedly and press, uh, pressing C and sending it will reset it back to zero. Um, so we could just do uh, R to read a couple times to get it back, but it's really hard to see because of all the stuff I did for debugging, and that's not a problem because I made a little script thingy at the wherever the hell that is. So if I send that, it'll tell you what the values are, and if you remember, um, the value was supposed to be uh, 93 point something something, and as you can see, it's 93 and the rest are all zero. So if we were to uh, reset the Arduino, to see what the thing is. Let me just press a button. See, it was 93.34, and as you can see, we got 93. So that's pretty dang close, and I could um, increase the precision if I, uh, you know, didn't do this step the way I did. All right, so now let's give it another example. So uh, just to show that it's not a fluke or whatever. Um, so if we go over to here, um, Let's say we want the second variable to be uh, 88, and then the rest until the last one will be, how about 70? Okay, so we're going to send 33, 88, then 10 to 33, then 70 uh, to this register. So we'll upload that to the Arduino to see what the result should be. Okay. So now we can copy this over to our notepad. As you can see, it's right next to it. So this is what the answer should be. Uh, keep in mind that these are negative values, and since I'm just sending a single unsigned byte, um, this will overflow. So really, we're only going to, be able to only going to be able to compare these values very easily. Um, so let's do that now. So firstly, we want to send 33. We know how to do that. Um, so let's just do uh, W exclamation point. Uh, that might have screwed it up because it's kind of a little bit finicky. Um, if I send a character before another character, it doesn't quite do it right. So uh, W exclamation point, set the first one to 33. So then the second one we had set to 88. Oh god, what have I done? Yeah, so 88. So what is 88 in ASCII? So 88 in ASCII is X, so we will then send W capital X, and then we will send a few 33s in this case one two three four five I just don't want to mess this up so we'll send w exclamation point um, a couple times one two three four five and then we can send the number what was the other one the other one was 70 yes my memory is not very good um, so 70 and ASCII is do, 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 capital F. So we'll do W capital F and then W exclamation point. So now that we set all the registers inside of it, we can read back our results. And as you can see, the first three values, because they are not negative, have come across properly. So um, it always rounds down. Um, so if I were to have more decimals, decimals of precision, it wouldn't matter as much. In this case, it was a pretty big difference. But um, so 125, 125. Uh, 4, 4, 27, 27. Um, as you can see, these overflowed because, you know, single byte and whatever. So I take a calculator and I get uh, 256, and then I subtract uh, 20.75. You get 235, and as you can see, this is 235. So it works. Uh, fantastic. Um, thanks for sticking with me if you've watched this whole video. I hope it wasn't too absolutely terrible and to the, well, to the point where you can understand what's happening. And uh, yeah, see ya.